Hi, I'm Merrick Dometto. And I'm Classic Gamer. And welcome back to Let's Play Broken Sword, The Shadow of the Templars. Yay, you got the title right. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember the... the... <laughs> All right, is... I actually think the trailer on. actually goes Broken Swords. Uh, hold... I mean, it does say The Shadow of the Templars. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Patrick's what? is inside. It's called Patrick's Inside. I know, I saw it. McDevitt. But on the outside, Mc... it's McDevitt's. McDevitt's, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, maybe it, it was his, um, his father. I don't know. But he's, his name is Michael. I don't know. This place is weird. Now we can harass Hello. Uh, Fitzgerald some more. McGuire says he saw you working at the dig. What's more, he saw you talking with Pegram. I knew this would happen. I knew I'd get caught. Just my luck. Grasped up by a delinquent and a dimwit. I need to talk to Professor Pegram, if he's still alive. What do you mean? Is he in danger? Yeah. You too, if I'm right. You're not in the social security. Hell no. What makes you think that? Well, uh, I was claiming benefit at the same time I was working for Pegram. I'm not in a position to make judgments, Sean. That's between you and your conscience. I'm just a doctor. All I want is to talk history, to Pegram professor. about the gem. But he's not here. I know that. But he left that package with you. Why would he, he assume that George and America is from the social security benefit system in the UK slash Ireland? No idea. That doesn't make sense. So where did Pegram go? I don't know. I swear it. He came to see me early this morning. Said he was leaving. He, he asked me to give this there package to a guy called Marquet. All right. I'm, I need to say right now. Mm hmm. The, the, the long pauses where he's looking around, those are beginning think... to annoy me. <laughs> Ask him about the castle first before we do the right. package. What did Pegram find at the castle? The entrance to an underground chamber. It was filled with earth and rubble, and Pegram had us dig it out. We uncovered a secret room, a hidden chapel. Oh, you found Dave Chappelle. Did Pegram find the gem in the altar room? I don't know. He made us leave, and wouldn't tell us why. Half an hour later he came out, white as a sheet he was. He closed down the dig and locked up the castle, sent us all away. From the sound of it, Pegram had discovered more than just the gem. Now the box? Yep. Show me what's in the package, Sean. I'm hoping I for can't a do that. Why not? where we open it. I promised the professor. Head. So what? You didn't have any qualms about <laughs> like this game suddenly camp. gets extremely So where's dark? the harm in taking a peek where. inside Pegram's package? You don't know these people. I can't. I don't dare. This is your last chance to show me the package, Fitzgerald. I've been patient with you, but now it's time to kick ass. But he'll kill me. Who will? The man from Paris. Jack Marquet. Pegram told me if I gave him the package unopened, I'd hear no more about it. But if I double-crossed Marquet, I'd be dead. Ooh, this is a spooky looking man. I'll deal with Jacques Marquet. Give the package to me. No, why should I trust you? Because I've I don't know who to trust everyone. anymore. I wish I'd never even heard of the Lockmarn gem. Is that the gym? Where are you going? And there he goes. Hey! I just seen a big red! Get out of here, Maguire! Come back when you're old enough! What's the lad howling about? 
A big red sports car. Sean Fitzgerald's been run over. Get out! Noisy little tyke. Maybe you should send out some medicinal brandy, Michael. Oh, yes. And who's going to pay for it? Not me. Me too, neither. <laughs> Love how it doils. Sentences make no sense whatsoever. <sighs> As if you heard the sound that was outside, because was obviously the game's the quite... Yeah. I assumed it was yeah. Fitzgerald cut, uh, doing a runner. Mm. You're not far off. Well, I mean, Can no, you see what Ron's doing there life. in the corner? Do you see him get out the thing from his... Um... Yeah, there you go. So the way you... Um... Let's see if you can figure out how you pick it up. Right. When he gets it out of his pocket. Watch him. Come on. You were just doing it. Doing that. There we go. Almost as if he'd sensed my intentions, the old derelict snatched the wire from the table. Hello again. Ow. What? What's that you're making? It's a necklace, me poco. Oh, sure. Made out of steel wire? <laughs> That's right. A necklace for my pretty one. When my little lover feels it round her slender neck, she'll be mine. All mine. <laughs> I'll see you later. Quite an evil laugh. Hello again. Not as evil as George Stobart. <laughs> what? <No. laughs> if I was a woman, I wouldn't think much of a wire necklace. It's not made for a woman. I've got my sights on tastier dishes than women. Flesh as smooth and tender as a maiden's. Bones as soft and white as a newborn babe's. Rabbit, lad. That's what gets my juices flowing. <laughs> okay, so it's a rabbit snare. Yes. Or he... Fex rabbits, uh, either one. He, he might, we don't know, he might be a Space Jam fan. It's possible. <laughs> ah, so you're making snares to trap rabbits. That's right. Do you have a problem with that? Damn right I do. Isn't it painful? George, fuck. Only if I get me fingers caught. I'm talking about the rabbits. Do they feel much pain? You bet. <laughs> George, you can't talk about giving someone pain when you shocked a child earlier. I'll see you later. Yep. So do we give him a beer? Um, no. But if you watch what happened, what he does, do you watch him carefully? What does he? What, what does he keep doing? Sneezing. It's a clue. Yeah. So and as he sneezes, if you watch him, he knocks his glass back. So we have to wait for him to sneeze. Well, the wires. And then grab. Yes, and because uh, he'll be distracted by that. There you as go. As soon as the old guy looked away, I grabbed his Good piece job. of wire. Thank you. <laughs> First time. <laughs> He's got another one. <laughs> it was a short piece of wire twisted into a rough circle. Hello again. Ow. Stop sneezing at me or I'll kill you. What? Here, this wire belongs to you. Oh no. Never saw it before. No. I'll see you later. Liar. Oh, so is George. So he's in, so he's in right company. Yeah, Excuse sure. me. Uh, yes, sir? Aren't you going to see what happened to Fitzgerald? Why? D didn't you hear what the kid said? The man's been hit by an automobile. You don't want to listen to McGuire. He's a born liar and a hooligan. So am I, you sir. So I'll beg you, I'll ask you to respect the, the hooligan. More beer over here. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh. 
I'm really concerned for Fitzgerald's safety. Why? He's probably gone home, unless he's in the ditch. Don't you care about him? He was real uptight when he left the bar. And whose fault was that? You are what happened to him, not me. That's right, Michael. It's not wrong you are there, Mr. O'Brien. Now, just a minute, you guys. All I did was ask him about Pegram. That fella owes me 180 quid. That's an awful lot of money, Michael. That was 160 quid. For compound quid interest, time. too. It grows with each time of telling. Exactly. Thanks. Right, now go outside and talk to McGuire to find out what Wait, happened. Wait, why does he owe him quid? Oh, because he he had a room. No, and no, he but done this a punk. is Ireland, right? Ireland uses Irish dollars. No, it used um, uh, pounds, and then it and then it's now it now uses euros. Euros. So I guess this yeah. is either back when they still used pounds or a part of Ireland that or. Because you know this part of Ireland that's still considered the UK? Uh, yeah, um, uh, uh, the U UK and Ireland, so I think it's Northern Ireland that Northern doesn't. Ireland. I should know that. I should know that. But I think, um, Northern Ireland, or part of Ireland that doesn't, is not part of the UK, um, is, uh, I think they still so use... So you can um, go there. And you can say it's the UK if you want to get the shit beaten out of you. Yeah. I was telling yeah. the truth about Fitzy, mister. Okay, okay, calm down. <clears throat> now tell me what happened. I was standing here, minding my own business, when I saw this beautiful red sports car coming up over the hill. Ooh, Would you look at that, says I. And I going over to take a closer look. Next thing, Fitzy comes tearing out of the pub and nearly knocks me on the ass. But the car just flies at him. It was too fast for poor old Fitzy and hit him an awful wallop. He goes flying up on top. Jesus, says I. I thought he was a goner. Next thing, the driver hops out and I couldn't believe my eyes. He was dressed like a bloody pixie. Now, I don't know if you noticed... It's but him. As he... It's Mr. Khan. Uh, indeed. You're correct. As he gets hit... Well, did you yeah, notice I that noticed green that, thing that went up as soon as, we, as soon as we exited the building. Yeah, I not just that. Did you see Did you see the green the green fit thing go out of, fit, uh, out of Fitzy? I, I've never noticed it before. Someone pointed it out to me. I, I've never ever actually seen it before. But the... Uh, there's something that flies out of Fitzy. It's, you might miss it if you don't know it's there. What do you think so. this wire could be used for? Stealing cars. There's only one problem. The local policeman? No. Nobody in Loch Marne has got a car. Fair. How would you know that? <laughs> he lives here. I I know, but the only way he would know that hasn't got... I mean, are, are, do they just not have cars, or do they... How have you? Have they had them all stolen? Um. Well, if all the cars have been stolen, I imagine someone would have a car because someone would have to steal the car. True. And it, I mean, I I don't imagine Lochmarn is a very a particularly large town. It's actually a very small village. I I'm thinking like double digits of uh, inhabitants, right? <laughs> um, I, uh, I, so, I mean, it's possible. Like small village, he probably knows everyone. Well, in there are there are some things in England where they're actually called hamlets. Mm. So a hamlet is basically uh, a couple of houses and maybe, um, maybe a pub. About Could England, be, and, have you heard of a of a place called Torpenhower Hill? No. It's funny because it's three different languages, including including English. Like very, like there's Celtic and Gael, all involved in there. And What's it called? Did you say? Torpenhauer Hill. No. It's funny because Tor means hill, Pen means hill, and Hauer means hill. So it's hill, 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 hill. <laughs> 
there, there's um, a, a comedian called, I think you might have heard him called um, uh, Jimmy Carr. I've heard of Jimmy Carr, yes. Yeah, so he, when he talks about doing the different accents around the UK, he goes about, uh, uh, this is up in Yorkshire, I think it's up in Yorkshire he talks about it. He goes, tin, tin, tin. He goes, which means it isn't in the tin. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious when I heard it. So where is it then? Tin, tin, tin. Did this pixie have a scar on his cheek? I couldn't see. He was wearing a stupid mask. Are you a special agent? Sorry to disappoint you, kid, but I'm not. I'm just an ordinary guy caught up in a whirlpool of intrigue. And you're drunk. Not so. Yeah, you've been drinking mucky beer in the boozer. Only a few glasses. I thought you said you were a cop, George. <laughs> Did Fitzgerald exactly drop anything thinking. when he was hit? I didn't see. It all happened so fast. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. Okay, now go up the hill to the... Uh, well, you can do that if you want to. Do that first and then go up the hill. The plastic cover had been smashed by the pixie's car, revealing a switch. I'm very surprised by this. What? Uh, this, this machine, like, that it smashed open, because I assumed I'd use the wire to, like, to jimmy it off. I pushed hmm. the switch down, but in doing so, it snapped off in my hand. I don't think you can get the wire before <sighs> Fitzy gets hit. Uh, true. Uh, that's just what I thought it was. Just saying so that, that that lever that snapped off in your hand does not open the trap door. Really? No. Because I know what this is for. <clears throat> yes. It's um, the beer delivery. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. You don't... Ugh, you're da... You're feckin' daft, ain't you? <laughs> uh, he's a bloody idiot. Alright, we're going up the hill. Okie dokie. Okie dokie, Dr. Jones. <laughs> Try climbing the haystack. Get away, you silly noodle! Can't you see the load's unstable? And try again. On the back of the cart was a crazily stacked tower of hay bales, leaning precariously against the castle wall. Don't climb on the cart, pea brain! Get down, you lemon brain lummock! <laughs> uh. You'd think after a while it would be just Ah, do whatever the feck you want. I don't give a shit if you kill yourself. <laughs> I'm not your bleeding father. Do what you feckin' like. The farmer's craggy face was set in a mask of aesthetic appreciation. His feet were set in a pair of manure caked boots. Well, yeah, he's a farmer, George. Hi, it's me again. So I see. What now? Again? Yeah, if you examine the hay cart, it, it's like he reacts like you've spoken to him before. Yeah. But obviously you haven't, so... Does this false nose mean anything to you? You're a circus clown. No, but I got this from someone who disguised himself as a clown. Is that a fact? Why did you do that now? He's a psychotic killer. I think he may be connected with Pegram's disappearance. Have you ever heard of a John Wayne Gacy? I'm tracking him. Do you recognize yes. the man in this photograph? No, but I wouldn't trust him. His eyes are too close together. Just like He's Jordan's. not a friend of yours, is he? Oh no, far from it. In fact, I believe it's the face of a killer. I knew it! Piggy eyes can't trust him. Does this curiously twisted piece of wire mean anything to you? Oh dear, now what would you be wanting with a cruel snare like that? Oh, it's not mine. It belongs to the old guy in the bar. Ah yes, it would. Do you recognize the name on this card? I can't read that little writing. 
It says Thomas Merlin, Gruber Electronics. Is that your name, Tommy Merlin? No, but what a great stage name. It had what my high school hypnosis act had lacked, style and class. For and a few seconds, I bathed in spotlights on a thundering tide of applause. Tommy Merlin, hypnotist. Are you all George, right? Focus. I'm fine. I just remembered something. <laughs> We're investigating something right now, George. Come on. Does this tool mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Is it used on sheep? No, it's for lifting the covers off drains. Never. How? Well, the end of the tool fits into the hole in the cover. Uh, they'd slip out. Angles are wrong. You'd never do it. I have. I did it in Paris. Your word against his. I'm curious. How, well, I'm, I'm more. I'm more willing to take the word of the farmer. <laughs> what do you make of this matchbook? Seems ordinary enough to me. Would you like to shake my hand? What is this? I don't do that male bond and stuff. What do you make of this tissue? That's a sorry sight to wave about in public. Oh, it's theatrical grease paint. And that makes it all right, does it? I must remember that next time someone complains about the state of me handkerchief. So, one, never, ever wipe off grease paint with a handkerchief. If you intend to ever use that handkerchief again, because that's not cleaning off. Also, <laughs> how would he imagine this was used on a sheep? I, I don't it seems know. very painful <laughs> for the sheep. Have you seen Professor Pegram? No, he's packed up and gone. Do you happen to know where? Back in England, I suppose. Do you think Pegram's disappearance is due to the curse? Look at the facts. He dug up the gem. He disappeared. Bingo! It doesn't take a degree in mathematics to work that one out, does it? You don't have to be a smarty Pythagoras with a calculator. I guess not. Pegram has run off with the gem. I'm ass I assume I don't have to explain who Pythagoras is. Um, doesn't ring a bell, I'll admit. Pythagorean theorem? No. Uh, you can, uh, it, it's for deducing the angles or the lengths of triangles. It's a geometry thing. Oh, okay. Like, if you, if you know the measurements of two of the sides, you can find the measurement of the other side. Oh. Did you happen to see a red sports car down on the road? I caught a glimpse of a flash of red on the hill and heard the racket. Sure, it was an awful noise. A sports car, you say? A Ferrari, to be exact. A racing car? And what was it doing here? The poor fella must have been lost. The driver of the Ferrari <laughs> was involved in an accident. Is that so? Yeah. He knocked somebody down outside the bar. What an idiot! How could a thing like that happen? He was traveling too fast. So fast, he ran right under the car? I mean, the car was traveling too fast. But you'd have thought the idiot could have heard it coming. I know, he was kind of very much an idiot. Maybe you know the guy who was hit by the Ferrari. His name is Sean Fitzgerald. Oh, I know him all right. That's me nephew, the idiot responsible for the stacking of my hay cart. Was oh, he yes. killed by the car? Oh, no, but he has been abducted. Well, that's a relief now. Wait, is Ask he dead? the castle in the book first, thing about Fitzy afterwards. Is, is he dead, though? Is he proper dead? Um, where, well, you see Fitzy get hit, but surprisingly... I you saw a lot don't of blood, though. Fight. Yeah, you don't actually find out what happens to him properly, but I think the Wikipedia page does say that he died, but you never find out. What can you tell me about the castle? Not much, I'm sorry to say. Most of its history is long forgotten. Ah, but if these old stones could only speak, what stories they'd tell. Stories to make your toes curl and your blood run cold. You know, this castle is said to be over 600 years old. Who built the castle? 
Mad Feelin, the first Lord of Lochmarn. Well, I say Lord, but actually he was little more than a village chieftain. He built his castle from the remains of the Templar Preceptory. Ooh, interesting. Where was the site of the Templar Preceptory? Right here, on Temple Hill. Feelin built right on top of the old wall. It's said that deep beneath these walls, there's a Templar chapel. Did Pegram discover the chapel? I don't know. His workers were sworn to secrecy. Good book? A book? It's a passport to a world of fantasy and imagination. Yeah? What's the title? Creative Shelfing for Beginners, the 1978 edition. <laughs> What's so cool about home improvement? There's nothing like it. The resinous autumnal aroma of seasoned wood, the rhythmic rasp of the plain. Ah, no wonder our Lord came to Earth as the son of a humble carpenter. I bet he was a wizard with a chisel and a length of two before. Uh, I don't think they had two by four, but all right. Surely the betrayal of Christ's <laughs> adoptive family as humble artisans is a symbolic metaphor. I don't know about that, but I know they were carpenters. Haven't you read the book? Well, no. But I have seen the greatest story ever told, and I don't recall Jesus putting up any shelves. Do you mind if I climb up your haystack to get into the castle? What? You'd break your stupid neck for sure. Do you think I'd stand by and see your brains dashed out? I'd be very yes. careful, and I promise not to sue. You won't get the chance, not while I'm here to stop you. Okay, now do I bring up uh, McDooter? Yep. Okay. Aren't you going to look for your nephew? What for? From what you say, it's too late. Well, you could report the matter to the police. Better not. Besides, what could they do? Well, they could mount a search. They have only the one bicycle between them. In a question of superior acceleration, I put me money on the Ferrari. I think you ought to know exactly what Sean has gotten himself into. I'm not sure I want to know. But you're his uncle. His own flesh and blood. You're right, but what can I do? If I'm not here to guard it, some idiot might try to climb the haystack. What a moral dilemma. Stay here and guard this potentially lethal agricultural construction. Or to go off in search of the prodigal nephew, the very man responsible for said hazard? It would need some thinking about. Why, there's no problem. You're right. Why didn't I think of it before? We'll demolish the haystack. Now, I, I do... There's something that occurred to me looking at this game's cover, which we've discussed at length on during this Let's Play. Mm -hmm. If I... Per, per, back in 1995, purchased this game based on that cover, I would be very disappointed. Because <laughs> it, it seems like not quite a horror game, but like a fairly dark mystery kind of thing, right? It... It is quite dark. Freaking, we're in a cartoon about to climb a haystack. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to demolish the haystack to go look for Sean. I'll stay here in your place and warn anyone who's silly enough to climb it. Marvelous! I think I should start me inquiries in the bar. Of course you do. Of course you should. <laughs> you would think that, you bloody idiot. It's the only place of gathering. He in strode the off in the direction of Devitt's bar leaving me to contemplate the stack of hay. Fall, 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 fall. God damn it, George, you had one job. Try climbing up before um, anything else. The stack of hay stopped short of the top of the wall. Even if I stretched as far as I could, the wall was out of reach. What I needed was a slice or two of Alice's Wonderland. If you look at the, if you look at the wall a bit further down, sort just sort of in front of George, up, up a bit, up, right a little bit down. No, no. <laughs> That's not going to work. He's literally right in front of his hand. There was a narrow crack between two of the stones where the centuries-old mortar had crumbled away. 
I pushed my fingers into the narrow crack. It went back several inches into the rock. Now, remember when you asked me in, in part one about the manhole lifting tool being pretty much a, a thin solution to something in the game? I inserted the end of the lifting key in the mortarless crack and gave it a firm shove. It remained lodged in the wall, jutting out to form a step. Now, when you leave and go back to Paris, you, for some reason, have the lifting key back in your pocket again. But one thing I don't understand is that if it's lodged in place, how the fuck did he get it out again? I mean, he could have worked it out or moved it. Eh, true. I mean, the stable from downwards. Oh, the goat. Okay, this is the infamous goat puzzle. Do you remember how I said to solve this one? Well, yes, but not before I get Frank, uh, George hurt. <laughs> you have to click and make him get up. No, I this think. is the ending. He's dead. Goat killed him. <laughs> Death by goat. You can talk to the goat, by the way. It was the fiercest, meanest-looking old goat I'd ever laid eyes upon. You ever laid eyes upon a goat before, George? <laughs> I think it's the meanest he's ever seen. Hey, Billy. The animal fixed on me with an evil glare. Behind the malice and resentment, there was a cool intelligence. How you doing, boy? I felt as threatened as I'd been by the assassin and his goons in Paris. <laughs> okay, so you can't grab that um, item that's on the left there. So what you got, what you got to do is, <laughs> I suppose you can try it. Yeah, it doesn't work. Allowed. Don't let me. So what do you, what do you think? I mean, obviously the plow on the left side is a clue, but. You remember how he, if you, you when you tried to go towards the hole, he, he got knocked down. Yeah. So. So, do you want me to tell you, or do you want to work it out? Uh, do I have all the items I need to solve this? Um, you don't need to have any items. Then I will. I will experiment. <laughs> it was a rusted piece of iron, maybe part of a plow or something. Hmm. Hmm. So I have the I have this and I have the ladder. Yeah, but you can't go down that ladder until you deal with the goat because he won't let you pass. It's actually very simple. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you and everyone else. Th this took me a long time to work out when I first played this game. I could not solve this puzzle, and it's one of the most infamous puzzles in point-and-click adventures. Um, it's probably. The, I think the only one more infamous is the t is the cat hair mustache. What game's that in? Gabriel Knight Three. <laughs> okay. It's the one where you have to put where you steal a man's ID and you have to make a mustache out of a. Cat out of cat, you have to use tape on a cat to get its hair to make a mustache using the maple syrup to disguise yourself as that man, and then you have to draw a mustache on the ID because the man you're trying to disguise yourself as doesn't have a mustache. <laughs> I've told you about this puzzle in length. That, that that just sounds very confusing. It's absolutely mad. Okay, you got the right idea by try by walking over to the plow. Hey, you're Billy. Not doing it kind of like in the right the order. The goat responded with a cool and penetrating. So he won't let you near it, near the plow if you do it like that. But maybe there's another way you can do it. Hmm. I kill the goat. 
No. Okay. Right, so what do you think you can do when he hits you like that? What is what what's the one thing that you can try and do? It's not trying to getting up quickly and running down the ladder. So what else can you do? Do I have control in that moment? Don't. You do. Oh, okay. I was not aware of that. But my cursor went away. I don't understand. It will come back. Do you want me to tell you? No, I, th I can figure this out. Okay. The, the thing is, it doesn't seem like I can do anything is the problem here. You can. It's just not very obvious. Okay, where should I have my cursor to be able to do anything is at least answer that. Okay, you want to move... If I tell you that, I'm going to tell you the answer. All right, just tell me the answer then. Okay, so click when you get when you get knocked down. Yeah. Click on the cloud on the left, and George will get up and run over to it. Okay. Just be quick with your cursor. And as soon as you. There you go. There you go. Do you know what? I think there actually is a clue on the ground there. The Can you see the where, the, where that line is for the plow? Become tangled on the old like plowshare. I think that's a clue there. I've never noticed that before. The I little, think... the little line to right just in front of George, because it, it's like someone's dragged it along the ground. No, that that just happened. That just happened. Well, no, I think I'm sure it was there before. It but wasn't. I could be wrong. I think the clue is that when he go when the, the goat goes back. He it he flips his head so the lead the the lead move the tether moves. I think that's the clue. I just didn't know I could interact in that in the, during that cutscene. Yeah, I I will admit I didn't know you could do that either. The amount of I spent so long in this location. I think I gave up on this game at one point. Does it take your like if it didn't take your cursor away? I think it would be less infamous. At least personally, uh, that, but... Uh, that, that puzzle is probably one of the... Um, well, the people, that, people who, who talk about the game will arranged that on puzzle. the wall. They'd been drilled there deliberately. The sack contained a fine white powder. Oh, excuse me. As I dipped my fingers into the soft white powder, I realized what it was. Plaster of Paris. I'd used it in kindergarten to make casts of animal paw prints. You had an interesting kindergarten. The only object on the table which interested me was a small sack. The bench had probably been used by Pegram and his archaeological team. It was a statue which had fallen from its place on the wall. Five fingers of stone projected from the back of the carving. Ah, got it. I placed my fingers and thumb into the holes in the wall. Nothing happened. What should have happened is you should have lost your fingers. The statue was too heavy to lift. It overbalanced into the sand. So in the director's cut, there are some things that they change very slightly. So in this particular point, like when you As knock I over that the statue... Stone upright, I noticed it had left a pattern of holes in the sand. Ah. And when it leaves those holes in the, in the sand, you can it basically allows you to zoom in. So there's more detail in some of the puzzles. The five fingers on the back yeah, of the statue sense. had left their impressions in the fine sand. So I'm assuming... Let me know if I got this. If I've worked this out. Mm -hmm. After Behind I interact the with the rest of the stuff. was a carved panel decorated with animals, birds, and plants. I tried in vain to move the panel. We're going to go to the pub... To get some water, 
to mix with the plaster of Paris to make a cast of that. You are on the right track, but you can't get the water just yet. There's a few things you need to do first. Can I talk to the, the goat? The goat was tangled up with the old plow. <laughs> Can I show him my, my white powder? Hey, Billy! The goat responded with a cool and penetrating stare. Okay, now, now, now it, it wants revenge. Uh, I would say, yeah. Keep hoping he's gonna fall. <laughs> and the problem of George Stobart will be solved forever. <laughs> you wanna find the arrow first. There you go. I don't think really there is a lot of pixel hunting in this game in particular. Like some some other games there are pixel hunting, like Monkey Island for hey, example, McGuire. that game does have pixel hunting. What do you want to know? Do you know what this white powder is? No. <laughs> See you later, kid. Okay, mister. <laughs> Show it to the barman, you get the probably the funniest reaction from him. <laughs> I'm gonna be showing it to everyone, obviously. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I've just got the Fox just staring at me at the minute. Hello again. What? What do you make of this white powder? Ah! Hair <laughs> fever! <laughs> Helpful. I'll see you later. <laughs> he was real helpful now, wasn't he? Indeed. The farmer was drinking and chatting with his pals as if nothing had happened. Maybe abduction had replaced cattle raiding as their national pastime. <laughs> George, do you have to be any more bloody racist? Hello. <laughs> ah, hello there. Let me introduce you to my pals. We've already met. Do you recognize this white powder? Seems ordinary enough to me. Can we talk to him more about Fitzgerald? Yeah. I want you to know you have my sympathy. Oh, it's just terrible, awful. It's the worst news I heard all day. Let's talk the bad news all right for this week and the next. The whole year? It's worse than that. It's the worst disaster in living memory. Isn't it the biggest calamity in the history of the village? I would say it's the biggest in the history of Ireland. The most awesome disaster since mankind paddled out of the primal plop. There's no beer. I drown. Oh, that, that would be my fault. Is a glass of beer more important than a man's life? Were you talking to me? To all of you. Sean Fitzgerald has met with God knows what and all you can do is drink. Sean has gone for a ride in a flash car, that's all. Why don't you calm down and join us? What about Sean? Why aren't you out looking for him? There's no point in launching an ill-equipped expedition to save the lad. In a life or death situation, preparation is essential. That's why I slipped in here. For a point. <laughs> he needs to take a second read at that line. Because when he was going to say ex... Because when it, he meant to say expedition, he said exhibition. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. O'Brien. Hello there. What now? Can you tell me about this wire? What do you make of this piece of wire? It looks ordinary enough to me. Oh, lame. What do you make of this white powder? Could it be bicarburetor of soda? The boy told me Fitzgerald was driven away in the car that hit him. McGuire is always spinning wild yarns. I don't know where he gets them from. Television, I expect, or comics. If I was you, 
I take what he says with a generous pinch of salt. McGuire's tale about the car sounds quite plausible to me. He says the driver was dressed like a leprechaun. That boy has a head full of fluffy toys. Technically, he said pixie. <laughs> Are you assuming hey. leprechaun because Ireland? Hello there again, mister. Does this piece of wire mean anything to you? Not me, mister. Do you recognize this white powder? No, I don't. I'd do something to make this game a little harder. I have, if you show this man the powder, he sneezes and you have to go get, and it blows it around, you have to go get more. <laughs> what do you know about leprechauns, Doyle? Leprechauns? Is it the little people you're talking about? Sure, and a cousin of mine was wed to one? Oh, come on. Do you really expect me to believe that? It's the truth, I'm telling you. She fell asleep on a fairy ring, see? When she woke up, there he was. A little fella, all in green. Tell me more about your cousin and the leprechaun. Oh, no. Well, young Mary was <laughs> speechless. Especially when the leprechaun up and spoke to her. Be my bride, me darling, says he. And she'll never want for riches again. Okay, says she. And he slips a ring of daisies on her finger. Amen. So there you are. Proof that the little people exist. Well, that's no proof. All you have is her word for it. Not so. The following spring, she had a little baby. Did the leprechaun's promise come true? What promise was that now? That she'd never want for riches again. Now, there's the strangest thing. She never did. I thought you said she was claiming the social part. Indeed, Mr. O'Brien. But there's riches and riches. She told me, Pat, she says, that little darling boy is all the riches in the world to me. Well, that was helpful. Bye for now. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, yes, sir? Does this piece of wire mean anything to you? Good God, man. Put it away. What's the problem? Don't play the innocent with me, mister. What you do with that wire is your own business, but don't drag me into it. Does this... I knew it. The minute you walk through the door, I knew you spelled trouble. Now, just a minute. It might be what you're used to in New York, but we don't use that stuff here. Hey, it's plaster. I found it in the castle. Give me another beer, dude. Give everyone another beer. Let's party, guys. I think <laughs> you've had enough, don't you? Hey, listen. Is it supposed to taste the way it does? Go Pauline Stilt is brewed from the finest chemicals in the world. I'm sorry, but the pump appears to be broken. I could fix it for you. I don't think so. This is a job for a professional electrician. Oh, well, at least the glass washer is still working. It's not my dear, is it? Well, it just so happens I'm an electrician. Check out well my credentials. Well, I'd say pretty well, safe. Well, isn't that marvelous? <laughs> Here's a house bedeviled with faulty wiring of a wayward nature. Here's you, an electric man, with a little plastic card to prove it. Hmm. I still want to see what you can do before I let you touch me beer pumps. You can make a start on the glass washer. <laughs> and when you've finished that, will you take a look at the pumps? I couldn't see anything obviously wrong with the machine. I figured it must be the wiring. The white whiskers on the... The resem... There was nothing physically wrong. 
Try to see if you can get the um wire or the plug. What? Ah, yes. The um. Yeah, try looking at that. I used all my knowledge of electrical engineering to examine the plug. Seemed fine to me. It was an electrical plug attached to the glass washer. Now you already have the item needed to solve this puzzle. <laughs> nope. I replaced the fuse with a piece of wire. I knew it was dangerous, but I was desperate enough to disregard everything I knew about standard safety precautions. Excuse me, Mr. Leary. I fixed your glass washer, no problem. Bingo! And a blessing to all the saints. A free half pint to that man, on the house. Now, could you take a look at the beer pumps? Well, I guess so, but I'm not making any promises. If you can't fix them, I'll have a riot on me hands. The pumps are in the cellar, right? That's right. You'll find a flashlight down there somewhere. Now, before you go down to the cellar, you know where um, Doyle is drinking at the bar? Can you see that there's something on the bar uh, under his elbow? It I was a beer-stained piece of toweling. Go and pick it up when he lifts his elbow up. The man's arm lay across... As the man raised his arm to drink, I snatched the towel away. Now we can go down to the cellar. We will solve this big mystery. Our name isn't George Dirt Inspector. What a dumb place Augustan to store a flashlight. Russell. A dark cellar. The only way I was going to find anything down there was to feel around. My hand closed on a long metal rod. I pushed the lever and heard the grating of metal, but nothing appeared to happen. What do you think that opens? Trapdoor. Indeed. Now you can go upstairs and open it. Until you do that, you can't see anything in the cellar, including the flashlight or torch. We call a flashlight a torch in the UK. Well, in England, anyway. Mind you, I don't know why we call it a torch. A flashlight sounds better, now I think about it. I lifted the trap door and an overpowering smell of stale beer rose from the cellar below. I looked down on a stone tiled floor, way too far to jump. That's unfortunate, you're jumping anyway. Oh, Tim! Excuse me. There was a nasty feeling in my guts I usually associated with light opera. Hey. It was Khan. What's the problem? <laughs> Did you see what happened here a few minutes ago? What was that? A man was involved in an unfortunate accident. I didn't see anything. What about the boy? Well, he doesn't know anything either. The kid, well, you know how it is in these rural communities. Not enough genes to go around. I prayed McGuire had the sense to keep his mouth shut. Was the guy hurt bad? He's been taken care of, but he thinks he dropped a small parcel. You didn't happen to find it, did you? If I had, I would have taken it to the police. Of course. Thank you. Well, he's totally trustworthy. <laughs> the trap door gave access to the cellar of the bar. It wasn't my nerves that stopped me jumping. It was my damned legs. They wouldn't move. <laughs> it wasn't my nerves that stopped me jumping. It was my damned legs. They wouldn't move. You're jumping and you're gonna like it. <laughs> Hey, McGuire. What do you want to know? Nothing. See you, you later, can't kid. Discuss con. Okay, right. Mister.
Bless you. Are you talking to Ron or me? I'm talking to Ron. <laughs> I didn't know you sneezed. No, I didn't sneeze. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just messing. Oh, hello, shiny thing. Then I noticed a flash of light. Something sparkling beneath the open trap door. It's not the Lochmarn gem, is it? It was Pegram's gem, all right. Jeez, it is! A large, uncut blue stone. Well, that's fucking lucky. As I held it aloft, I realized the fascination it could command. I guess I was already under its spell. Did you find it? What? Whatever you was looking for. Uh, yeah. Listen, McGuire. I want you to keep this to yourself. No problemo. Just chuck us up a crate of lager. No way, you're not old enough. We can sell it and make some cash. Forget it, kid. I couldn't betray Mr. Leary's trust. I could, for sure. That old misery guts deserves it. If you want to do me a favor, keep a lookout for that guy in the suit. Okay. But it'll cost you a pack of the chips. Oh, and shout if you see that Ferrari. Do chips come in packets in Ireland? Uh, or are they getting the word for crisps wrong? Uh, I think it's it was a couple uh, of chip, paper chips sacks filled with trash. Or fries. I searched the trash, but there was nothing useful there. So you're in the trash, George. Good to know. It was a bunch of cleaning materials. I looked among the cleaning materials, but saw nothing I could use. Okay, before we it do It was a the calendar with a faded photograph of a prize winning carp. That actually is the last part of Ireland. Go back up to the castle and um I'll tell you what to do once we're up there. I looked among the Hello again. What? What does this gem mean to you? Well, well. Would you look at that? Pretty. Do you recognize it? No. I can I'll show the later. gem to everybody now. Brilliant. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, yes, sir? I found your flashlight. So I see it. You'd better keep hold of that until you fix the pumps. Does this gem mean anything to you? Phew. What a beauty. I bet you wish that was real, don't you? It is, Bill. Thanks. We're not going to tell him then. Hey! Hello there again, mister! What do you think of this flashlight? It's not very bright, is it? Hey, you're not very bright. I could say the same about some of the present company. That's true. But don't let him hear you. Keep it under your hat, mister. That flashlight, like your brain dial, is not switched on. I don't think he heard me. Do you recognize this gem? Saints be praised. It must be worth a fortune. Uh, maybe it is. Have you... It's the one which Pegram took from the dig. Oh. How come you've got it now? He left it behind. I'm looking after it. Oh. You could take that to Dublin and sell it. Bye for now. Excuse me, Mr. O'Brien. Hello there. What now? What do you flashlight? think of this flashlight? It's not a very practical piece of equipment, is it? It's not switched on. Well, I'm referring to the lack of a bracket. How would you be fixing that to your bicycle? I don't have a bicycle. That was an odd thing to bring up. Do you recognize this gem? <laughs> ah, that's a beautiful stone. Is it the one which Pegram found? And the reason why both he and Fitzgerald have disappeared? Then it's only a matter of time before you vanish too. Goodbye for now. Hello. 
What now? What do you think of my flashlight? Those electric lamps are useful but limited in lifespan in my experience. I was given one for my birthday, but it stopped working after a month. Well, the battery was probably drained. What? Nobody told me. I threw it away. That's unfortunate for you. This is the gem that Pegram found in the castle. So that's what all the fuss was about. I can't see why myself. Why men would fight and steal and kill over a little bauble like that. Well, it's kind of neat the way it sparkles. I gotta go. Got to show Ron the flashlight. <laughs> Hello again. What? What do you think of this flashlight? Very useful. That could be very handy in the dark. How much do you want for it? It's not for sale. It belongs to Leary. I'll see you later. And that's about all the time we have for now. We'll finish up Ireland next time. Till then, I've been Merrick Tomato. And I've been Classic Gamer. And see you next time for more uh, Shadow of the Templars. The Shadow of the Templars. In anyway. Indeed. Ciao. Bye bye. Hi. Thanks for watching. This has been played, edited, and recorded by me, Merrick D'Amato. And he's been helped by me, Classic Gamer. You can find a link to Classic's YouTube channel, Classic's Gamer, and his Twitch in the description below. Please like, comment, and subscribe.